Welcome to the seventh and last part of the CSGO skin making tutorial using free and open source tools. In the last video we have completed the creation of the extravagant skin. Now we are going to see how we can view the completed skin in game in a regular CSGO map. Viewing your skin in game is not a must. As we've seen in the fifth video, CSGO provides us with the workbench tool where we can see the skin from different angles. You can take screenshots from the workbench and upload them to your skin's workshop post to showcase the skin. However, showing your skin from inside the game can cause a big impact on your skin. It can be the difference of whether you get a yes or a no vote in the workshop. When viewing the skin in-game, you can check it out in the weapon's loadout, where you can view it at angles that are not available in the workbench, such as the front or the back of the weapon. In the workbench, you get only one lighting while in a CSGO map you can show the skin under different lights. This is useful for every skin, but particularly if the skin has a glowing effect. You can shoot, move around, and spin while inspecting the weapon. You can also check how the skin looks from a third person's point of view. All of that will give the viewers a clear impression of how your skin will look if it gets accepted. Having said that, there are some prerequisites that you need to have. You need to own an official skin for the weapon for which you're creating the skin. For example, if you're making a skin for an AK, then you need to own an official skin of the AK. For a P250, you need to have an official P250 skin and so on. You can either buy a skin from the Steam community market, or you can even use one of the skins dropped after a match that you played. The reason that you need to own an official skin is because you will have to replace that skin in-game with the one you created. However, keep in mind that you'll see your skin in the same state as the official skin that you own. So if it's battle scarred, then that's how you'll see your skin. One workaround that can help is to set the entire alpha channel of your skin to be very dark. This way, even if the skin is worn out to a certain degree, it can still look new when inspected. However, this method only works if your skin uses the custom paint job style. As I mentioned a moment ago, we will need to replace an official skin that we own with the skin we're creating. In my case, I will be replacing the Glock High Beam skin. And the way to do that is by going to the Items folder under the CSGO slash Scripts folder. We will open and edit the Items game file. But before that, I strongly suggest that you create a backup copy of it. Because this is an important game file. Now as you can see, this is a huge text file. We need to replace the settings of the high beam skin with the settings of the extravagant skin. The problem now is to know which of these objects we need to modify. The object we need to change should look something like this. Now we need to find out the ID of the skin we want to change. The best way to do that is to go to csgostash.com. Link to the site is in the description. I'm looking for the Glock high beam, so I'll go to pistols. Glock, scroll down until I find the high beam skin and click on it. Go down to the texture pattern tab and click on it. Open the picture in a new tab and copy the name of the image from the link. Go back to the items game file and search for the name of the image. And this is the object we need to change. The ID is 799. Open the text file of your skin. Those are the settings that we saved in the fifth video in the workbench. Copy everything between the parentheses. Go back to the items game file and replace the settings of the 799 object from the style field downwards. Now we need to remove the path from the pattern and normal fields, as well as the file extension. Those two fields should only contain the name of the VTF file. Don't forget to save the file after you modify it. Next and final step we need to do is to copy the VTF files of the diffuse and normal maps to the paints folder under this path. Your skin should be copied to the appropriate folder according to its style. If it's a custom paint job skin then it should be copied to the custom folder. If it's a patina skin then it should go to the antique folder. In our case, the extravagant skin is a gunsmith skin, so I'll copy my files to the gunsmith folder. Now open CSGO. In order to view the skin, we need to load a bots match. 
We will not be able to view it in the weapon's loadout right away before loading at least one match, otherwise we'll see a black skin instead. So start a match and make sure to choose practice with bots. If you stay on official matchmaking, you'll be thrown out of the match as soon as it starts. Choose any map you want and click go. And there you have it. We can now view our skin in game. Now we can check if it looks good or not and take screenshots that can be uploaded to the workshop post of the skin. We can also go to the weapons loadout and view our skin there as well. And with this, we conclude the CSGO skin making tutorial using free and open source tools. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you haven't done so already, do subscribe to my channel for future tutorials. Also feel free to take a tour in my Steam Workshop and follow my work there.